to my channel. So today I thought I would just go over what it's been like having our puppy here at home with us for the last month. So I'm going to introduce you now. She's right here. Here she is. Say hello to our little puppy Dakota. She's getting really big already. She's already almost 20 pounds and she's only three months old. But this is her and I love her so much. Yeah. So there is a lot to cover when you're having a puppy for the first time, so I thought it'd be a good idea to do this little Q&A session where I go over everything we've been doing with Dakota for the last month and how it's been going, as well as answer some of the questions you guys submitted about what it's like taking care of a puppy for a first time. So question number one was, how often do you need to take her out? This is going to really vary depending on the type of dog you have. So the smaller the dog, the less amount of time they can hold their pee. And then also the younger the dog, the less long they can hold it. For her, she can hold it pretty long. We take her out every one to two hours just to be on the safe side. But for us, that's really easy because we just need to open the door to the backyard and she goes running out there to do her business and then comes running back to us when we call her name. Dakota, are you ready to go outside? Stretch. Hmm, <laughs> girl. Probably need to do a number two, huh? She owns this piece. But when it comes to walks, we only take her on a walk for maybe one or two times a day. And those walks never last more than 30 minutes maximum. So right now when we're doing working, uh, we'll just usually take her on one 30 minute walk a day. And this is just to go around the neighborhood and meet other dogs, meet other people, and socialize her. Oh, my. that she loves the snow. Uh, Dakota is a Eurasia, so she has two layers of fur on her. So she's really warm and poofy when she goes outside and she loves climbing up snowy mountains and digging holes in there and just rolling around in it. It's super cute. All right, next question was what kind of tricks does she know? So we've actually taught her a lot of tricks so far and she's very smart and picks them up super quickly. So some of the ones that she knows is she knows sit, she knows stay, she knows come. So when we call her, she'll always come running towards us. Uh, she also knows some cute tricks like she knows high five, she knows wave, she knows shake. Um, and she also knows lie down and be calm. She knows drop it. So there's a lot of things that we've taught her. It's kind of hard to keep track of them all, but she's very smart and very cute when she's doing her tricks. Uh, the next question is, how is it with sleeping? There are a couple things you need to know when you first get a puppy, and one of those is that they sleep a lot. I think when we first got her, the estimation was for her to sleep around 16 hours a day, which sounds like a lot, but that's also counting the overnight sleeping. With Dakota, she was actually really quick to pick up the sleeping schedule. During the first week we had her, we had to take her out once in the middle of the night for an entire week. So this was kind of like we would go to bed at 10 or 11 p.m., she would wake up at 3 or 4, we would have to take her outside to go pee and then come back inside and finish out the night. And then she would sleep until about 8 a.m. and then wake up again. So this has kind of still maintained her sleep schedule overnight, but now she doesn't need to go out in the middle of the night anymore. So after only one month, she's now sleeping through the entire night, and that's really helpful. So she sleeps in our bedroom with us in her crate, uh, and we have a cute little bed and cooling mat there for her. And she'll go to bed anywhere from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., and then she'll sleep until 8 a.m., and that's pretty consistent. She'll always start making some noises and whining a little bit at 8. So then we'll get up and we'll just take her outside, do, do her business, and at that point, we're already awake, so we just go on with our day. All right, uh, the next question, which is something that's been kind of a problem area for us, is the alone time training. So it's very important, especially if you work full time like we do, to train your dog to be alone when they're very little so they don't freak out when you leave them all day to go to work. And that's pretty difficult when you have a little puppy. So the way we've been doing it is we do like semi alone time training and right now she is able to be alone for a maximum of two hours by herself. And the way we do that is in the morning on the weekends, we'll bring her into the living room and we'll close the door so she can't follow us and then we'll be in the bedroom for one or two hours while she's alone in the living room. And what we'll usually do is we'll give her lots of treats that take a long time to eat. So this includes things like the lick mats or we'll put frozen food inside these Kongs. So she spends a lot of energy trying to eat all of those. And then we'll 
put some toys out for her. We have this puzzle toy where we can hide little treats and she really likes that. And it's just things to basically keep her occupied for those one to two hours. And we'll also play uh, dog TV on the TV. So it's basically just going through nature sounds and flashes of different types of nature animals. And she really likes that and that helps to calm her down too. And then I'll usually have a timer on my phone for one and a half to two hours and we'll just be in the other room so we can always hear her if anything is going wrong. We also wanna make sure that whenever we come back to her, she is distracted because you really want to avoid the dogs making an association with the whining and the person coming back. So if they're whining, you shouldn't enter the room because then they'll think, oh, I was whining, that made the person come back and then they'll do that all the time. So you have to wait to distract them to come in. And we usually do this by either, like we have an app to turn off the lights in here uh, when we're not in here. So we can do that to distract her or we can raise the volume of the TV with our phone before entering the room. Uh, and that also can distract her a little bit. So that's what we've been doing. And we've slowly built up the alone time. And now she can be alone for about two hours. We tried three hours one time, but that just wasn't really good for her. So we're back down to the two hours and gonna just continue to slowly build that up over the next couple of months. And the way we're able to do this, uh, balancing it all with our life and our work schedule, is that I've been using this app uh, to get babysitters to come watch her during the day. And luckily we also have family that live nearby and they love to babysit her as well. Usually our life schedule will look somewhat like this to balance the working and being with the puppy. Oh yeah, and that brings me to the next question, which is how do you balance working full time with having a puppy? So the way we do it is a mixture of working from home, alternating between the two of us, uh, using family members to babysit her, and also using babysitters from this app Rover to babysit her too. Currently, we've tried this, I think two weeks now, where I'll work from home two days a week, uh, my boyfriend will work from home one day a week, and then we'll use a babysitter for one day, and then we'll use a family member for one day. And that's kind of been our cycle. We did try one day where it was a half day, where we just left her completely alone for those three hours, but that wasn't really good for her. She was a little sad when we came home, so we've been trying to mostly use the babysitters from now on. But this Rover app is really good. Uh, they do people coming to your house for house sitting. They also do dog walking services, and they also do overnight babysitting services where you take the dog to someone else's house and they watch them overnight. And all of the prices are for the entire day. It's a pretty good deal if you want to watch the dog for eight, 10 hours, because it's the same price for that than it is for just watching them for a couple of hours. So for people who use it for the whole work day, that helps us a lot. All right, the next question was, how do you do her grooming? So we've been trying to do her grooming ourselves uh, with different variations of success there. First of all, I have to brush her daily. She has a double coat of fur and there can be a lot of fur that gets trapped in those undercoat layers. So you need to brush her to make sure that there's no tangles and to get any of that excess fur out. And then she gets really poofy after and it looks super cute and she's kind of like this tiny little teddy bear. We also have been trying to do her nail trimmings once a week. For that, we'll put down a lick mat on the floor so she'll be distracted. And then we'll just try to trim her toes while she's standing up. That's a bit more difficult. She has very dark nails. so it's hard to see where to clip them, but so far it's been okay. I also brush her teeth twice a week per se. I use a little toothbrush that you put onto your finger and then I put some dog toothpaste on there and I just use my finger to brush her teeth. And she's been really good about that. Uh, she doesn't really like the taste of it, but she sits down and lets me brush her teeth for her, so that's fine. And we have tried giving her a bath one time now. She was a little freaked out by it. We don't have a bathtub, so we bought this mini puppy pool and we tried to put her inside it. We just kind of had her stand in the water a little bit and dip her paws in it. And it's really funny because even though she loves snow, she was freaking out from the water. But I think slowly but surely we'll get her used to it and eventually be able to give her a full on bath. And we have showered her one time with just the shower head. She was shaking, but she wasn't whimpering or screaming or anything, so I think we'll get her used to that too. Uh, the next question was what kind of food do you give your puppy? So for us, we've been trying to give her, of course, puppy branded food, but we've been avoiding chicken. When we got her from the kennel, they told us that you should avoid buying them any chicken products because a lot of dogs can be allergic to chicken and develop those allergies very early on in puppydom. So most of her food is other kinds of meat. So we have beef, we have duck, we have lamb, and these are all the basis for the kibbles or the wet food that we give her. The kibble is what we use for her main meals. So she has three meals a day, she has her breakfast 
breakfast at like eight or nine in the morning. Then she'll have lunch between 12 and one. And we finally give her her dinner between six and seven. And we've been measuring her food to make sure that she's growing properly. I think right now she's getting about like 180 grams a day. And this is not counting her extra treats and stuff that we put in her Kongs and things. But the vet says that she's a good weight, so that's what's most important. And what we do with her kibble is we actually wet it because uh, we heard that a lot of puppies forget to drink water. So by wetting the kibble, they get that extra hydration that they really need. I think it makes it taste better for her as well. And we've also been using this slow eating bowl. We noticed when we first got her, she'd be done with her meal in like 30 seconds. But with the slow eating bowl, it takes her maybe like a couple of minutes, like five minutes to eat all of her food. And that's a much better rate so that she doesn't eat too fast and get nauseous from it. When it comes to the Kongs and Lick Mats, we've just been using this beef based uh, wet food and we've been filling those and then using those in the alone time trainings that we do every other day and just giving it to her as special treats for things like crate training as well. Okay, I think we've actually come on to the last question, which is also one of the more broad questions that we've been trying to figure out how to do. This topic is very overwhelming for a lot of new pet owners, especially when you have a little puppy, but this is all about socializing your puppy. So what that means is during the first year of the puppy's life, you want to expose them to as many different things as possible so that when they grow up, they're not scared of those things or aggressive towards those things. And the list can just go on and on and it's all kinds of things that you never even think of. So this refers to things like little babies, little kids, old people, young people, tall people, short people, wheelchairs. It could be things like wearing high heels. It could be things like a ladder or a swimming pool or a beach or a forest uh, or going camping. There's all kinds of things that you just want to expose your dog to at a young age so that when they're grown up, they're just comfortable with basically everything and they won't start barking at those things or being afraid of them. Baby. Baby's first forest. this by taking her with us to a lot of different places. We take her on car rides, we take her to family members houses to go on visits, we invite a lot of our friends to our house so she's used to people coming and going. We take her on walks every day and then during those walks there's a lot of dog owners around here so she's been meeting a lot of different puppies. We have some friends who have a puppy and we've been trying to have them have play dates but it is a lot of things and there's some things that are more difficult to expose her to than others. Uh, so right now it's winter time so it's really hard to take her to a beach for example, or to go swimming in a lake because they're all frozen. So we've been trying to make do with just using our little swimming pool, but it'll be a bit different when she sees the thing in real life. Uh, going to a park, for example, is a really good thing that she won't be able to experience for a few more months now. But I'm really looking forward to all of these special moments that we're going to be sharing with our puppy in the near future. But yeah, I think that pretty much sums up everything that we've learned uh, this last month of having our puppy. I know it goes by really quickly and we just really want to treasure this time with her in her puppydom. She's the sweetest thing ever. We call her our little angel shark because one moment she'll be super cuddly and the next minute she'll be biting and stuff, but that's pretty normal for a puppy. It's uh, their teething periods. Just make sure if you get a puppy to also give them a lot of chew toys. That really saved us as well. But yeah, I'm so glad I was able to tell you guys all a little bit more about our life with baby Dakota. She's going to be around in a lot more videos in the future, of course, now that she's our new little member of the family. And I can't can't wait to show you all her growing up and us taking her on camping trips and road trips around Norway in the future. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to give this a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you enjoyed this video and to ping the bell if you want to see more Dakota content in the future. But yeah, I can't wait to see you all next time. Bye guys!